So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's based on a book series about vampires. Oh, vampires are extremely cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not these ones, though. Oh, they're not? No, they're not. You know how vampires, like, turn to dust when they're exposed to sunlight? Yeah. Well, these ones sparkle like beautiful little diamonds. Okay, okay. What about mirrors? Do they, like, show up in mirrors? Yep, these ones certainly do, sir. They seem to be quite amused by them in certain instances as well. Wow, okay. Do they do, like, the basic vampire thing of sucking blood out of people? No, these ones try not to. They call themselves vegetarians. Oh. Oh, okay. Most of them go to high school. I, I gotta say, I'm not loving this concept so far. Well, the books have sold millions of copies to brand loyal preteens with disposable income. Okay, I gotta say, I'm loving this concept so far. I thought you might. So what happens with these sparkly bad boys? Well, the movie's gonna follow this girl, Bella Swan. Oh, and what's she like? What do you mean? Like, what's her character? What's her personality? Oh, no, she doesn't- that doesn't apply here. What? Yeah, no, she's just as plain as can be so the girls in the audience can just transpose their personalities onto her. Oh, okay, yeah, that's smart. Yeah, so she's just the blankest slave you can imagine. Aren't the other characters gonna find her boring, though? No, nope, they're all gonna freak out when she walks into a room like she's the greatest thing ever. Oh, they are? Yeah, like at the beginning of the movie, she's starting at a new school and all the guys are all over her and all the girls are like, oh my god, hi. Wow, 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 wow. So anyway, then she's gonna find out about this family called the Cullens that go to her high school and they're all secretly vampires. Do they look like they're of high school age? No, nope, they're all clearly in their 20s. So why, why go to high school? To blend in. Do they blend in? D no, they don't. Seems like it'd be better for vampires to not go to high school, what if a student gets a paper cut? Oh, uh, well then it would be over, for sure. Right, so, so why do they go to high school? Because that's where the main character spends her time and I need them to interact. Oh, yeah, okay, gotcha, that's all you had to say. So anyway, Bella develops this romantic thing with one of the vampires, this guy Edward Cullen. How does that start? Well, she walks into class and he looks like he's about to vomit, so that you know, really kicks things off. Oh, romantic puking is tight. Yeah, so then he's like super rude to her and he stares at her like he pooped his pants and he's trying to see if she noticed. Undeniably romantic. It is, so obviously they fall deeply in love with each other. Because of the poop stares and the meanness. Yeah, and also he saves her from being pancaked by a van and then gaslights her about it ever happening. So does she find out that he's a vampire? Yeah, eventually she figures it out. How does she do that? Ah, she just, she Googles it. Oh, characters learning stuff via search engines. That's one of my favorite things to watch. It is very cinematic, for sure. So then she confronts him about it. She's like, yeah, I know you're a vampire. And what does he say? Well, he's like, you shouldn't love me, Bella. I'm like a hundred years old and I've killed people. Oh my God, he's a hundred? Yeah, he's a hundred years old. And he's like, I've been watching you sleep every night for months. I, a very old man, have been breaking into your room and watching you sleep. So she realizes how horrifying this is and distances herself? No, she goes with the exact opposite of that. Oh, really? Yeah, she's like a bull. She just sees a red flag and runs at it. Sure sounds that way. Yeah, so then they're officially dating. So they start to do like romantic stuff. What kind of stuff are we talking? Well, he gives her some piggyback rides, they climb some trees, just vampire stuff. Wow, 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 wow. There's also this guy Jacob, right? And he's not gonna do much in this movie, but in the next one, he's gonna be a werewolf. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and there's gonna be a love triangle, because this guy has visible abs, so that automatically makes him a love interest. Very cool, and if we're lucky, fans will, like, take sides, you know? Some will be Team Edward, some will be Team Jacob. My thoughts exactly, sir. There's gonna be a huge debate over which one of these two monsters gets to hook up with a teenage girl. Wow, now that you phrase it like that, I hate it to my very core. Oh, whoops. Whoops, eh? But anyway, eventually it's gonna turn out that he was never in love with her. He was just kind of like in love with her unborn child. What? Yeah, eventually when she gets pregnant, he's gonna be like, oh, I am vibing with that fetus. That's my girl right there. Oh, oh my god. So anyway, back to this movie. Bella's gonna get to know Edward's family and go play vampire baseball. I'm sorry, I thought you said vampire baseball, but that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. So what, 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 what did you actually say? Vampire baseball. Baseball with vampires. Oh, I did hear correctly. Okay, carry on. Yeah, so they do that for a bit, but then because something should probably happen in this thing, some bad vampires show up. Uh-oh, what's their deal? Well, this one vampire, James, becomes obsessed with Bella, like, right away. How come? Because she's the main character. Right. Yeah, so we find out that this James guy is, like, the deadliest vampire there is. He's gonna stop at nothing to get what he wants. Well, sounds like it's gonna be tough to stop him. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they have, like, a little scuffle with him in a dance studio, and then his head pops clean off. Oh, well, good. So then they go to prom, and Bella's like, turn me into a vampire, you cow and he's like, no, it's the first movie. I can't do that yet. Yeah, definitely want to save that for later. Yeah, and then it just kind of ends. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like we're going to be able to manipulate teenage girls into giving us money, so I'm happy. Great. Although I do kind of feel bad for whoever we end up casting as Edward Cullen. Yeah, it is going to be tough to book any badass movie roles after being known as the sparkly vampire dude. 
So, you have a Twilight sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. This one's gonna be called New Moon, and it's gonna start with a shot of a moon. Oh, everything's making a ton of sense so far. Off to a good start. Yeah, so in this movie, Bella's gonna start being scared about growing older while Edward stays the same age. All right, all right, all right. But then Edward's like, you know, Bella, technically I'm 109. Oh, right, yeah. And jokingly, she's like, well, maybe I shouldn't be dating such an old man, you know? It's gross, so... You know, that's gonna be a funny little moment. Oh, uh, that's absolutely correct, though. Anyway, then in class, they're gonna be talking about Romeo and Juliet, and Edward's gonna be like, the only way for a vampire to kill himself is to go in front of this committee in Italy. Oh, I wonder if that completely unnatural thing to say is gonna come into play later in the movie. It is, actually. Oh my god, what? I'm a writer. Wow, I guess you kinda are. And so later, the Cullens are gonna have a birthday party for Bella, and she's gonna get a paper cut on some wrapping paper, so that just starts dripping blood. Not really how paper cuts usually play. Play out. Well, this one's gonna frickin' drip blood, so Jasper, he's just gonna go nuts! Uh-oh. Yeah, so you know, Edward has to step in and protect her. How does he do that? Well, he's gonna push Jasper away, but not before hurling Bella across the room into the wall and making her bleed even more. Oh, wow, probably didn't need to shove her. That part seemed unnecessary. You yeah, probably could've just done the pushing Jasper part, but he's gonna go ahead and injure Bella, too. Well, okay then. So then Edward's gonna realize that it's too dangerous for them to be dating, you know? If he really wants to protect her, he has to break up with her. Oh, very sad. Yeah, so he brings her to this forest where hikers keep getting violently killed and breaks up with her and leaves. He leaves her alone in the death forest so she'll be safe. That's right, yeah, and so she gets lost and collapses and a shirtless guy picks her up. Wow, off to a terrible start in the I Gotta Protect Bella project. Yeah, so she's gonna be so sad, she's basically gonna be comatose and expressionless. More than usual? More than usual, yeah, she's basically gonna be in a sadness coma and sit in a chair for three months. I guess that'll be fun to watch. It might be. And so anyway, one day she realizes that when she does reckless things, she gets gets visions of Edward, so she decides she's gonna do that kind of thing from now on. Feels like maybe there are deeper mental issues going on there. Probably. So anyway, she's gonna start fixing up this old motorcycle with Jacob, and he has muscles now, so he has value as a human being and can be a love interest. Oh, he's worth something now, that's nice. Yeah, we're gonna have this little montage of them working on the bike together. She orders a pizza and throws a slice at him, and we're gonna transition into him catching a tool. What? Why would we? Well, it's gonna be a cool transition. Right, but it involves her whipping a slice of pizza across the room? Who does that? I don't know, but it's gonna be a cool transition. Well, okay then. Anyway, then she finally takes the bike out and has like five visions of Edward and immediately crashes and bashes her head on a rock. Oh, she's absolutely the worst. And then Jacob pops his shirt off to help, you know, like a normal person. Sure. And then he shows her all his abs and rubs her open wound with a dirty, sweaty t-shirt. Very romantic and probably infected. Yeah, so they start getting closer and closer, but Jacob has a secret. Oh, he does? Yeah, he's like, Bella, have you ever had a secret that you couldn't tell anyone? That's how all secrets work. It is, yeah. So what is it? Well, let's just say he spends a whole lot of time in the woods with very muscular shirtless dudes. Oh, I see exactly what's going on. Yeah, 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 he's a werewolf. Oh, he is. Okay, I was way off. Yeah, werewolves rarely wear shirts. It's the werewolf way, because when they transform, you know, their clothing, it gets torn to shreds. Well, what about their pants? Well, sir, unless you want to talk about the technicalities of werewolf junk, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about pants. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. Anyway, so also that red-headed vampire Victoria from the first movie is hovering around, and she wants to kill Bella, because her boyfriend friend James was killed in the first movie. Oh, right, yeah, okay. But Jacob and his werewolf buddies keep chasing her away, and she dives off a cliff to escape. Oh, werewolves can't jump off cliffs, huh? Actually, that's the one activity we've established that they love to do. Oh, so so why? I don't know, but anyway, at the exact same time, Bella decides to jump off a cliff, too. What? Why would, why would she? I don't know, but anyway, now she's in the water at the same time as Victoria, so, you know, it's pretty dangerous. Wow, so what does she do? Well, she bashes her own head on a rock and passes out and has to be rescued. Oh, that is very on brand for her, but how come Victoria doesn't kill while she's unconscious. I don't know. Fair enough. So anyway, then Alice shows up because she had a vision of Bella jumping off a cliff like an idiot and thought she was dead. Okay. And then Edward calls Bella's house, but Jacob picks up the phone. Well, who answers somebody else's phone? Characters that need to create misunderstandings to drive the plot forward. Oh, okay. Yeah, and because somebody died earlier in the movie, Jacob tells Edward that Bella's father is arranging a funeral. And then he hangs up the phone. Oh, so Edward thinks Bella is dead? He does, and now he wants to die too. Oh, it's like Romeo and Juliet, except... You know, just awful. What? So what does Edward do? Well, he goes to this vampire committee called the Volturi, and he's like, hey, please kill me, I'd like to die. And they're like, no. Oh, very mean of them. Or nice, I can't tell. Unclear, so now Edward has to find a way to make them kill him. Well, so what does he do? Well, his plan is to take off his clothes in a public place, because apparently if people see a sparkly shirtless dude, they'll assume he's a vampire. Oh, exposing yourself in front of a crowd is tight. Have you done that? Yep, my hearing is next week. I'm pleading non-guilty, but there is a ton of video evidence. Well, okay then. Anyway, so Bella managed 
manages to get there in time and stop him. Wow, 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 wow. And he's like, you know, Bella, when I said I was leaving, you let me go, so you must not love me. Oh, that's a textbook manipulation and abuse tactic. Their relationship is very unhealthy, yeah. So anyway, now the Volturi have changed their mind and they do want to kill him. Uh-oh. Yeah, and they want to kill Bella too, because she knows too much. Man, gonna be tough to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because as they're killing Edward, Bella's like, no, kill me instead. And, you know, that convinces them to let them all go. I thought they were gonna kill her too. Yeah, I don't know. Well, okay then. So then the Cullen family, they all agree to turn Bella into a vampire. Oh, very cool. And then we're gonna have this huge moment where Edward is like, okay, well, before we turn you into a vampire, you gotta do something for me. What? What is it? He's like, marry me. And then she gasps and we cut to black. Oh, yeah, we get out of there on that shocking reveal. You know, I feel like agreeing to transform her into an immortal vampire is slightly bigger than a marriage proposal. Yeah, but this is like a cliffhanger. Is she gonna say yes? Well, she's already agreed to be a vampire with him forever. That's that's not even a question. Well, we're gonna cut to black. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like something the fans are gonna like a lot. And you know, hopefully the actors like it just as much. Oh, for sure. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. And this one's gonna be called Eclipse. Oh, sounds like a weird name for a movie. That's not something any rational person would stare at. Well, it's the name of the third book, sir. Our hands are tied. Oh, yeah, why, who did this? I don't I don't have any suspects at the moment, unfortunately, sir. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we track them down soon. So anyway, at the end of the last movie, Edward proposed to Bella, right? That's right, sir, and in this movie, he's gonna do that again. What, did she say no? She says no, sir, and she keeps saying no, because a lot of marriages end in divorce, you know? It's a big commitment. But her main motivation is to be an immortal vampire with him forever, for eternity. That's right, sir. Oh, I feel like that doesn't make any sense. How is this even a conflict? Listen, sir, the story had to be stretched out for money purposes, right? So I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about manufactured, meaningless conflict. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. I do like money purposes. They're the only purposes that matter, sir. Also, in this movie, Jacob's kind of fighting for Bella's love. He wants to be the one she chooses. But didn't the last movie end with him being like, ah, okay, looks like Bella's with Edward now. Oh, my God. That's so weird. Well, what's going on? I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it kind of feels like you're back on my back about manufactured conflict. Oh, I accidentally got back on that thing, didn't I? I apologize. Thanks, sir. So anyway, in this movie, that red-headed vampire, Victoria, whose face is just completely changed for some reason, is on her way to kill Bella, because she's obsessed with her. Right, why is that again? Well, she's the main character. Right. So in Seattle, Victoria, she's working on building an army of newborns. Oh, going to war with babies is tight. No, 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 newborns as in people that were just recently turned turned into vampires. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Alice has a vision that the army's moving towards them, and they're gonna be in Forks, Washington in four days. Four days? Isn't that like a four-hour drive? It is, yeah. Can vampires not drive? No, they could drive. I mean, even if they walk, that's a two-day walk. I don't know what to tell you, sir. It's gonna take them four days. They're gonna come out of the water. Oh, very slow vampires. And so since Jasper knows all about newborns, he's gonna lead a kind of training session. Which one was Jasper again? Well, he became a vampire during the Civil War, and he's the youngest of the Cullen clan. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and so the actor's gonna have to do a southern accent, and we're gonna have some flashbacks to him during the Civil War. Do you think it matters that he wasn't at all doing a southern accent in the first two movies? No, it's probably fine. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Any other side characters getting random flashbacks in this thing? Actually, I'm glad you brought that up, because Rosalie's gonna get one, too. Which one's she again? Well, she's one of the vampires, sir. I'm almost sure of it. Nice. Anyway, she's telling Bella about how she didn't get to choose to become a vampire. Her life was absolutely perfect, and she didn't want to become one. Oh, absolutely perfect, huh? Those are strong words. What was her life like? Like. Well, she was super in love with this guy. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, and then he, you know, assaulted her with a bunch of his friends and left her to die. Oh my god. Just an absolutely perfect life, you know? That's not, that, that word doesn't mean that. Anyway, then she got turned into a vampire and killed all her assaulters one by one and saved her ex-boyfriend for last and killed him while wearing a wedding dress. Yeah, that actually sounds a whole lot more interesting of a movie than the one we're making. Definitely. Do you, do you think that's a bad sign? No, it's probably fine. Oh, okay, good. Oh, and Bella's also gonna be told about some werewolf history. Oh yeah? What does she learn? Well, there was this big fight with the vampires, but this one lady, she saves the last spirit warrior of the tribe by distracting a vampire with her own blood. Oh, smart. Yeah, and so she dies because the way she got blood was to stab herself in the stomach for some reason. Oh, did she not know that other parts of the body have blood in them too? I guess not. Whoops. Whoopsie. So anyway, the vampires are gonna get the werewolves to come train with them because everybody's coming together to protect Bella. So a bunch of humans in Seattle are dying and a bunch of vampires and a bunch of werewolves are preparing to die yeah, and coming together despite a rivalry that spans centuries. Right, all that, all that, just for Bella. That's right. But so, like, 
Like, why? Well, sir, like I said, she is the main character. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, it's a life and death situation for a bunch of vampires and werewolves and innocent humans, all because Bella's on the movie poster. That is an important character trait. So anyway, then there's gonna be the big training scene with the vampires and the werewolves. A training scene, huh? What's that like? Well, the vampires push each other around for a couple of hours while the werewolves watch. And that's helpful for everybody? Apparently so. Well, great. Yeah, and then it's time for a fight. Oh, very exciting. I can't wait to see the main characters in some action scenes. Oh, well, actually, the main characters, they're gonna go camping. What? Yeah, they want to get Bella away from the action, and so Jacob goes along to mask her scent, and also Edward's there. And they go camping? They do. They go to the top of a mountain, but you know what happens there? It gets cold. So as the side characters are battling vampires, the main characters are gonna battle, you know, hypothermia. They are, and since Edward is a cold vampire, Jacob's gonna have to cuddle with Bella to keep her warm. I'd sure like to see them fight a vampire army, though. Well, we're gonna have Jacob spoon Bella and make eye contact with Edward, which is just as exciting exciting as a vampire fight. Is it though? So anyway, the next morning, Jacob finds out that Bella finally said yes to Edward's marriage proposal, so he's all pissed. Oh, he is? Yeah, he doesn't want to take no for an answer. He's like, I know you love me, you just don't want to admit it. And that's romantic? It sure is, sir. And then he's like, maybe I'll go get myself killed in the fight if you don't choose me. Kind of feels like emotional manipulation. Actually, it's romance. If you say so. Then she kisses him, so he stays, and he just leaves anyway. You know, I can't help but feel like this is putting some weird messages out into the world. Yeah, messages of love. Ah. And then we're gonna show some snippets of the fight with the newborns, and then Victoria is gonna find Bella and Edward. Oh wow, how'd she find them? Well, she could smell Edward, so she tracked them down pretty easily. They went through all that trouble of masking Bella's scent, but Edward's scent was traceable the whole time. That's right, sir. Very dumb protagonists. And then it's time for our freaking showdown with Victoria. Oh, is it gonna be tough to beat her? We've built this showdown up for three movies. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, Bella does the foreshadowy thing we shoved in everybody's faces earlier. And does Bella stab herself in the stomach like that lady did? No, she realizes that her arm also has blood in it, so she cuts that instead of her stomach. Very smart. Yeah, and so then Victoria's head just kind of comes off. Oh, yeah, it just kind of comes off, so that's all done. That's that, that that that's all over with. Just pops right off. Okay, great. And then those evil Volturi vampires, they show up and they're like, guess what? We're gonna be in the next movie. Very ominous. Also, Jacob breaks some bones, which doesn't really affect anything, and that's it. Wow, well, well, it sounds like it's gonna make money. Probably. Kind of makes me sad that there's only one book left to adapt. Yeah, I wish there was a way we could squeeze some extra money out of it. So, you have a Twilight movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. Final book, final movie. It's all very exciting. Well, actually, I thought we could squeeze two movies out of the final book. Really? Can we do that? Harry Potter did it. Yeah, that's true. There was a lot going on in the final Harry Potter book, though. Is there enough content in the final Twilight book to make two movies? Not really, no. So, so why would we? Well, because of money. Oh, money! That's the thing that I like! It sure is, sir. So what's gonna happen in part one of this thing? Not much. Oh, really? Yeah, basically, Edward and Bella are gonna get married, so that's gonna take about 30, 40 minutes. Oh, incredibly slow pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any conflict or drama or anything like that? Not really, no. Well, at a certain point, Jacob is gonna come out of the woods as a surprise for Bella. What? Why didn't he just show up to the wedding like a normal person? What a weirdo. Oh, you have no idea. He's gonna get real weird real soon. Uh-oh. Anyway, Bella tells him that her and Edward plan on getting, you know, intimate before she even becomes a vampire, and so Jacob gets really mad. Right, isn't that incredibly dangerous? Doesn't that go against everything Edward's been saying about trying to protect Bella? Yeah, but we need something in this movie, so characters are just gonna kinda do stuff. And why can't they just wait until after she's turned into a vampire? Well, because they need to go on their honeymoon, right? And she doesn't want to spend that time in pain turning into a vampire. Well, people can have their honeymoon whenever they want. It doesn't have to be immediately after the wedding. Well, we're gonna have it be immediately after the wedding, because otherwise there's literally no story here. Well, okay then. So anyway, they go to this private island, and the next 40 minutes is gonna be them on their honeymoon, just kinda, you know, being on a honeymoon. They play a lot of chess. Oh, really, really, really stretching it thin here. Oh, so thin, sir, the thinnest. Wow, 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 wow. Anyway, so then Bella's gonna end up getting pregnant. What, isn't Edward dead? He is, yeah. Aren't all his bodily fluids venom? They are venomous, yeah, for sure. I just, it feels like, I feel, it feels like that doesn't make sense. Well, we're gonna pretend like it makes sense, because otherwise there's literally no story here. All right, do what you gotta do, man. So anyway, then this baby inside Bella starts growing super fast, and it's killing her. I mean, she's wasting away. There's nothing but a skeleton left. Oh, 
Oh, very spooky. She has a skeleton inside of her. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody does. Oh, can you imagine? Very spooky. Anyway, so it really seems like this baby's gonna kill Bella before it's even born, but then they give her some blood in a sippy straw, and she's like, yum, yum, yum. What? Oh, also, the werewolves are mad now, because they think this baby's gonna be a threat to them, so they want to kill it. Why would they think that? Well, because new vampires have a hard time controlling their thirst. Okay, they're aware that Bella's also gonna be turned into a vampire, right? They are, yeah, but that's different. How? Well, she's the main character. Oh, right, okay. Anyway, so eventually Edward has to give Bella a C-section using his teeth for some reason, and he injects her with his venom, but it really looks like she's dead. Oh, bummer. And Jacob is so mad he decides to kill the baby, but as soon as he makes eye contact with it, he's like, oh. What? Yeah, he immediately imprints on a newborn. He's like, oh, are we gonna kiss right now? I don't like that. Oh, don't worry, sir. It's not weird at all, because Jacob's gonna help raise the child before getting romantically involved with it. I mean, you know that that's somehow worse, right? You know that. Okay, okay, sir, but you have, you have to remember. What? Money. Oh, yeah, money. Okay, yeah, no, no, yeah, I'm back into this. Okay. Okay, good. So the wolf man will raise the baby and then sleep with it, and our teenage audience will pay to come watch that. Okay, keep going. Well, okay, so then Bella's gonna turn into a vampire, and then we cut to credits. Very exciting. And then as a mid credit scene, we're gonna have the Volturi vampires be like, oh, we're gonna be in the next movie. Watch out. We literally keep ending movies that way. We do, but this time it's true. Oh, well, great. So what happens in part two? Well, Bella's a vampire now, and she's gonna run around the woods with Edward looking to hunt. How do you think we'll be able to improve those terrible running effects we've been doing? No need, sir. People will have already paid for their tickets, and it's the last movie. That's a good point. Why bother? Let's save some money. But then Bella's gonna smell a human, and she's gonna have to fight her newborn vampire instincts to try and not kill this guy. Oh, is that gonna be hard for her to do? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, she's just, she's able to repress those urges immediately. Didn't we say it takes most vampires? vampires decades to do that? We did, yeah, but she's the main character, so she's special. That makes sense. So then she's gonna meet her baby for the first time, which I figure we could do entirely in CGI. Yeah, sounds like that might haunt people's dreams a little bit. You know, there's definitely a risk of that, but I still think we should go ahead and just, just make this thing on a computer, see what happens. Works for me. So anyway, then the Volturi are gonna get word that this baby exists, and they're gonna think that it's something called an immortal child. What's an immortal child? It's like a vampire baby that's really powerful. We're gonna be pretty vague about it, but they want it dead for sure. Is it an immortal child? It's not, no. So then the Cullens go around the world and gather up a bunch of vampire friends, and all these people have different superpowers. Oh, they do? They do, yeah. There's one with the power of electricity, there's one with elemental control powers. This is just gonna straight up be an X-Men movie now, because there's not really anywhere else for the story to go. Oh, suddenly becoming X-Men is tight. So all these vampires come and train with the Cullens, and then it turns out that Bella has the power to shield people. That's why Edward was never able to read her mind. But Alice was able to see her future, and Jasper was able to affect her mood. Please don't think about any of this too much. Oh, okay, my bad. So then there's gonna be this big showdown in the snow between the Volturi and the good vampires and some werewolves. And how does that go? Well, the main Volturi guy, he cuts Carlisle's head off. Oh, he does! Yeah, and this big giant fight breaks out. Jasper gets decapitated. A bunch of Volturi lose their heads, too. One of the X-Men creates this big hole in the earth. A bunch of them fall into lava. Did this movie just get good? And then Ed Edward and Bella, they take down the main Volturi guy and they cut his head off too and Bella goes to set it on fire. I think this movie just got good. And then it turns out it was all just a vision that Alice was showing the main Volturi guy. So, you know, none of it, none of it, none of it happened. What are we doing here, man? Money. Oh, right, money. Okay, yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But didn't we say that Alice wasn't able to see visions with werewolves around? Please, please, please don't think about this too much. Oh, right, I keep thinking about things. I need to not do that. Yeah, and so Bella and Edward live happily ever after, and Jacob gets to hook up with the child he helped raise. Money, 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 money. And so what do you think? Well, you know, I think the Twilight books have definitely spawned as many movies as they possibly can, and it's probably best if nothing else comes of them. I don't see how anything else could come of them, sir. Hi, it's Ryan here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you liked it. And hey, while you're on the internet, why not check out Screen Rant's Behind the Screen podcast? Real fun conversations about all kinds of stuff relating to movies and TV, deep dives, movie facts, things you didn't know about your favorite movies. Check it out. It's a good time. And as always, check back soon for a new video. Okay, bye now.